Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to tell you all about my adrenal stress profile test results that I just received yesterday and I was super super excited to get the results because as you know if you've been watching my Hashimoto's healing journey videos you would know that I was really focusing on my adrenal health in the last uh, six months or so actually probably more than that and that's because I realized that adrenals are so important in the function of your thyroid and if you try to improve the function of your thyroid while having adrenals really messed up it will not work or it will even make you feel worse so that's why I realized that if I fix the adrenals it's very likely that my thyroid function will um, fix itself as well and hopefully I'll get rid of the Hashimoto's antibodies too. So I went ahead and ordered a saliva cortisol test, a four-point cortisol test which basically tests your cortisol at four different points in your day and also tested the levels of DHEA hormone which is also a hormone um, produced by the adrenal glands. So if you're wondering where to get it from, in the US there are a few different labs that do this test. There's a ZRT labs, which is probably the best. There is Genova Diagnostics, which is the one I got. And there are a few others. You can also go to StopTheThyroidManage.com website and they have a special deal for their readers as well. So that's another good option. And I think I'll try and link to a few places where you can get it done down in the description box. In Europe it's a bit more difficult. The only one I found was a Genova Diagnostics Europe in the UK and so I had to ship my my sample, my saliva sample to the UK with DHL Express overnight shipping which obviously cost me a lot as well. So I wanted to do this test a couple of years ago but at that time I really couldn't find the money to get it done even though I knew how important it was. But at this point, I had a little bit more money to do it and I decided to do it. And honestly, it was the best investment ever because the results are so incredibly informative. So at the beginning, I suspected low cortisol. Then while I was waiting for my test results and I was researching more and more and more, I started leading more towards high cortisol. And the problem is that the symptoms of both are so similar that without, without doing the actual test, you really can't guess. You just can't. As I said, just before I got my test results, I was almost completely convinced that my cortisol was high and in fact it was, it was too high. So my suspicions were right. My test results actually showed that my cortisol is off the charts high in the mornings. Just that alone is enough to cause my Hashimoto's and my thyroid issues and my um, energy issues. So that's such a huge relief for me and such an important piece in my healing journey, in the puzzle of my healing journey. So I'm really, really happy because low cortisol would have meant that I'm in a very advanced stage of adrenal fatigue, um, but high cortisol is actually just the first stage, so basically just my response to stress. Um, and in my case, it's chronic stress all my life, so it's like a chronic elevated cortisol for most of my life. But high cortisol is capable of a lot of evil things, including reducing thyroid function and uh, making it impossible for your body to actually use the hormones it prevents the FT4 from converting to FT3 and it also makes you gain weight and does a lot of horrible things and I will definitely be making another video in the future about what high cortisol actually means and what the symptoms are and things like that. If you're interested, definitely keep an eye out. As I said, I'm super, super pleased because high cortisol could actually be the root cause of everything, of all my issues and luckily it's really, really easy to fix. This is the chart of what my results look like and as you can see in the morning is off the chart high like really really high and then around one o'clock in the afternoon it suddenly dips almost too low it's slightly too low ideally it should be around mid middle of the range and then towards 5 p.m it goes a little bit too high again and then in the evening it's actually perfect because it dives down to the right levels and just before you go to bed Cortisol should be really, really low, so that's perfect. And luckily, my cortisol pattern still follows the, you know, the regular, the right pattern, so it's not reversed, which is so good. So talking about my symptoms, these results completely make sense because when I wake up in the morning, I'm all revved up, like really tight. All my muscles feel really tight. I feel really anxious, and I almost feel nauseous. Like you know, when you're just before a big presentation at work or before an exam or something like that, and you feel this. Like tight coil feeling in your whole body and you're almost sick 
that's how I feel almost every morning and it's really uncomfortable and then towards uh, one o'clock when my cortisol really dives deep down often I get shaky and really lethargic and really tired and I never understand why often I used to think that it was just low blood sugar but I used to test my sugar and it was perfectly fine I could never understand why but now I know it's just because of this crazy roller coaster of my cortisol going up and down and then after lunch towards 5 p.m. I suddenly start feeling really stressed and really tense again and I get this tension headache which drives me nuts and that's because my cortisol starts going a little bit too high again and then before bed probably around 6 7 p.m. suddenly I get this rush of energy and I'm all happy and I'm all relaxed and by the time it's time to go to bed I feel perfectly fine and ready to sleep um, however if I go to bed too late like let's say more towards 11 12 or even worse one or two at night then I get all really anxious and uh, agitated again and then it's difficult for me to sleep so I suspect that my cortisol probably starts climbing again if I don't go to bed so it's very important for me to go to bed by no later than 11 p.m. I would say and the day I did this test I actually felt really good my temperatures were really high and it was actually a really, really good day for me the way I felt and I think that if it had been a bad day my cortisol would have probably been way too high probably for most of the day so the strategy to fix this is really just focusing on the highs on the crazy highs because if you bring them down then hopefully all the other fluctuations will normalize themselves and the level will be kind of more even during the day and that should give me more even energy so that's really the strategy and it can be done with with life changes you know lifestyle changes like the times you eat, the time you go to sleep, the time you wake up, things like that, or the times when you exercise, and also adaptogenic herbs and a couple of minerals. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll definitely be making a video soon about my detailed strategy of bringing down my cortisol. So keep an eye out for that as well. So if you have Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism, or any kind of weird energy issues, hair loss, anything like that, I would definitely highly recommend doing this test because it's so incredibly informative and as I said I will keep talking about it in the next video so you'll get more information and hopefully you will benefit from it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.